Welcome to the CMC podcast. Uh, this episode, we will be talking about what does independent anchoring of the feet actually mean when using the Arizona Vortex. So I know uh, a lot of people I've run into, uh, either working with or teaching, have asked, you know, what in fact does it mean when it, the manual says, you know, anchor all feet independently. So uh, joining me this week uh, we've got Doug McElmurray, we've got uh, Wayne Chapman, and John McKentley here to discuss what it means to actually anchor the feet of the Arizona Vortex independently as stated by the manual. So uh, I, I've gotten this question a bunch, you know, because we normally, we're well, not normally, we, a lot of times we see an Arizona Vortex just uh, with three hobble straps when it's used as an easel a frame configuration is that appropriate Bleh, anybody want to take it I, I think it is i've done it a, bi- a million oh, I, times i've done it a billion times yeah too so how do you do it so many times and it's not in accordance with the manual well to like tell you the, the truth you caught me when you said that the manual says you have to do it i just thought it said it had to <laughs> You know, I, I'm pulling the manual out um, yeah, because, yeah. Uh, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like a lot of people. Maybe I don't read them as well as I should. And it, sometimes they change on you. But I just thought it said you had to you had to anchor the feet. And I didn't know about, well, independently. You know, I knew it was an option, but I yeah. didn't know it was a requirement. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess it depends on how you read it. Right. So sure. page 20 of the uh, Rock Vortex manual, securing the feet. Right. One of the things it says is connect the legs together using independent hobbles between each pair of feet. Yep. That's yep. one of the four ways in which you can do this. Yeah. Uh, you know, up in the top part, it says um, the feet of the vortex must be secured to control all forms of movement. Y- yes. So I, I, you know, preparing for uh, this podcast, I saw that too, and the, the the rock manual as well as the CMC manual, which I mean they're both pretty similar, obviously. Um, the rock manual says the vortex head and feet must be secured to resist all movement. Um, so the CMC manual says that as well. Vortex head and feet must be secured to resist all movement. It also, let's see. Ah, uh, re- so this one's from the rock exotica manual. Regardless of configuration, the feet of the vortex must be secured to control all forms of movement. The securing methods and rigging must resist all tensile, compressive, and shear sliding in parentheses, forces transferred to the feet by the legs in the frame. Feet must be placed on and or secured to a surface that will resist the forces being applied to it. Uh, the feet can be secured in numerous ways, including but not limited to, and, you know, w- one of them is, in fact, hobble straps. So, I don't know. That's just interesting because... Well, where does it say that they have to be independently secured that you it, started out with? It says independently secured i gotta pull up the manual here i'm uh i'm sorry yeah because i'm flipping through it and i didn't see that and like i said i'll admit i i i always read it to be the way steps 4a is uh where you've got to secure the feet but they gave you multiple options you know yeah which which page right. is that in the uh that's in page, page 20 page 20. 20 on the rock manual yeah uh, okay I yeah. gotcha. Well, then, uh, let but me go if, you know i think the catch-all is above right the feet can be secured in numerous ways including but not limited to. Yeah. But, right? Yeah, but... As long so, as you prevent that movement. So, so does a hobble strap uh, prevent uh, sliding? Like if you've got an easel A-frame on the edge of a building, does do hobble straps prevent sliding uh, away from the edge? Obviously, if the result is correct, yeah. I mean, I think we've all had it, you know, what I'll call it a settle. Yeah, sure. Or once you load it, but once it's loaded and settled i haven't had it move obviously if the resultant comes off different story sure you know j- just the, the resisting tensile and compressive forces like obviously with the hobbles you're going to resist compressive forces but right. uh it, it will not resist tensile forces like th- they'll lift right up right um yeah but the purpose of the thing when you rig it is to is if it's rigged properly it's self-supporting and none of that should happen i so i i don't disagree with that there is a picture in the CMC manual. It talks about the easel A-frame, and I'm looking for it right now. Ah, here we go. On page 26 of the uh, 
the CMC Vortex manual, it shows specifically the easel leg tripod is a directional frame, you know, goes through some spiel. The use of hobbles alone is not enough to secure the frame in this configuration as the frame will tend to move back when the load is applied. This example shows all feet bolted to the floor. So like this is specifically an easel A frame, but you know, like we use it mm-hmm. all the time and like the manual is clearly stating that it needs, they need to be bolted. The feet need to be bolted to the ground as I'm reading it. And that's the, like, that's weird to me. Cause I've, I've never done that before. So, I mean, I, I would, if, you know, if I had some bolts and, you know, people were going to let me trash their and, floor every day. Or their, or their roof or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The point is not to have to do that. I, I agree. So, you Well, know, I think, I think it too, it depends on the medium, right? The floor, mm. right? If you're on a slick tile floor. Sure. It's going to slide if you're on something. Yep. I mean, yeah, you are right that it does say that. It's page 27 on the uh, rock manual for the, for the listeners. Sure. It does. It does say that. Um, but I think, like I said earlier, once it's loaded and it finds its happy place, it's going to stay put. Yeah. I th- right. It, it, yes. I, I agree with that. Um, and I guess, you know, I've, I've run into a couple of hard liners, like I've done it and I'm happy doing it like just hobble straps, but I've run into some hard liners and it, and I don't have a good justification to say like, Hey, you know, you know, the hobble straps are just fine. Like I know it through experience, but I, you know. I look in the manual and the manual says, Hey, easel a frame. It needs to be, it, it specifically says the hobble straps are not enough. Like, right. and, and that, you know, I, I wonder, and I got this in my notes too. Uh, is there some, I don't even know what the right, right word is. Uh, legalese <laughs> to, to minimize liability, like particularly when training, like I, I know when I train people, I'm not sure of like if, if you say, hey, b- bolt all the feet down and they don't bolt the feet down and the vortex flips, then you can say, oh, well, hey, goofball, you're supposed to bolt them down so they didn't move. But, you know, is that a, you know, I don't know if that's a, a liability minimization. I, I just, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's a good point. I, I don't know the answer to that, Kelly, but it is it is good. Um, it's, a, it's a good question and it, yeah. and it sure smells like that, but yeah, um, I can't tell you that for sure. No, but I mean, that's, it, it's definitely a problem I've run into and I, I just don't know. Uh, I just don't have a good answer for it. So, um, could this could this possibly be though, where it shows the exam? It, it, it specifically says there on page twenty seven that uh, this example shows all feet bolted to the floor. We also recommend that even if the resultants are going to be good, that you still tether the top with the with the uh, cordelette, you know, that uh, the sixty foot cordelette, and that obviously is going to help with some of the movement of that. And then the hobbles will kick in once it's loaded. Yes. Like I, 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 I the cordelette's a safety thing. It's not meant to be a guy. No, that's just to keep a, you know, a dog leash on your 64 pound mm-hmm. of aluminum from whacking somebody in the head below. But exactly. Um, but exactly. But what isn't that kind of the intent that and you have to secure this until it's loaded because the resultant should end up inside at which like Wayne said, it's not going to move once it's loaded. It's when yeah, the load comes off. The that's the problem. In place. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, agree. Well, so I'll tell you when I was first learning how to use, uh, you know, uh, the vortex. Um, I thought it was okay. Like everything was cool as long as the resultant was, you know, anywhere inside the footprint, mm-hmm. uh, and the resultant was like an inch in front of the back leg. You know, just the way we had it set up <laughs> when we loaded it, and that thing like moved backwards a oh, lot, man. and. You know, uh, people around me, you know, immediately blamed the vortex for, you know, like this thing, it's, it's, you know, as if it had a brain and didn't do exactly what we told it to do. But, you know, I, I had it move and, and it was just a training thing. If it would have been bolted down, it certainly would not have moved. And, I, you know, I, I suspect that, that maybe that's what's going on here because again, yeah, it is an awful wide footprint, right? I mean, when you have the standard number of legs on a ESL A frame, that's sure. a rather wide footprint. And obviously there's a lot of space in there to keep that resultant quote inside the hobble straps sure but yeah. that's a that's a big area it, it really is it, it it definitely is a big target um again you know maybe this podcast is uh is short and not you know, <laughs> not, not gonna be that awesome but uh like i i definitely had uh i definitely if, took exception oh go ahead i'm sorry wayne 
No, no I was well, just well, going to say if you if you can if you can do it, that's great. But we know in reality that other than demonstration purposes, I know I have never bolted it down, and yeah. it has this little chain hooks on it where I know people that have done that in training where they have bolts and rocks and short pieces of chain and they hook them in the hook and and that's a satisfactory way of doing it. But in reality, many, many times you can't do that. If you can, great. Yeah. And the same thing is maybe instead of a bolt and a chain, you, you're using a, a nub and a rock or a piece of personal protection or whatever to, to bolt the leg down. But if you're on the top of a building or doing a, an evolution in an elevator shaft and you've got a hard floor and no places to bolt to, it's not going to happen. And if the thing's set up right, it's supposed to be self-supporting. And uh, the tether is on there, like you said. It's there as a leash just in case. But, um, it, you know, it, it maybe CYA stuff on there. I don't know. But uh, nobody's no. using it otherwise. And the point is to not have to do all that crap. That's t totally agreed. Uh, one of the other points I had with it is, you know, if, if hobble straps – alone are not sufficient you know why do they come with it so like that's the uh that was right. my other uh point so uh interestingly though I, I have messed around with um uh like tapcon screws like the blue masonry screws mm -hmm. uh for bolting feet and man you can get by with a little you know chintzy uh, 18 volt hammer drill uh sinking those things in and you like your vortex is not going anywhere uh on the, you know, if you can bolt those front feet to a, you know, a cornice of a building or something. So I, I have yeah. done that, but uh, it's usually small enough people won't notice. But um, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't recommend that often, but uh, but it works well. I'm, you know, in the, I don't know the sheer force on the tap cons offhand, but uh, I mean, I, I tested them real, you know, a uh, dirt bag backyard test and uh, screwed them into some, um, sandstone and some uh some marble because we deal with a lot of that where i work and if you, i couldn't break them either way like i you know two of them in each foot in the front and i, I could i pulled on them i pulled on two separate feet with a grip hoist and I, like I, I could not get them to move at like you know two thousand pounds or something and i i, I was satisfied with that number oh, yeah. so i mean tiny little tap cons too you know uh, maybe quarter eh, quarter inch i guess it's not too small but uh Anyways, something to, something for the uh, listeners to consider, I suppose. Uh, Sounds like the key there may be color match cock when you're done, so no one even notice knows that you did that, right? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. I mean, cock, cock, cock is your friend. So, yeah, and um, of course, um, the rear leg on an easel leg setup is going to be more in tension than it even in shear, probably. So, yeah, definitely depending on uh, what length you have it for sure. <clears throat> All right. Well, I mean, I I guess that. Uh, that's a short one, but that, I think that settles that. Like who? Uh, well, I, you know, I think as a follow up, what we need to do is go back to the uh, uh, to Rock and 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 the people that write the instructions and say, what did you really mean here? Because um, there's a definite conflict between the practical application that people are using, the expectation that they should be able to use it, sure. and things like that 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 probably need to be resolved and looked into a little bit and. Um, remember the people that write the instructions um, aren't always the end users or they're being overly careful as we've already talked about. Sure. Like, and it, you know, maybe rightfully so in a, you know, litigious world, like you, you, because nobody is bolting it. So you, you, obviously if something happened, you would be able to, you know, pretty easily point to that as a flaw. So, uh, all right. Well, it looks like we uh, generated some homework uh, for ourselves and in, in talking to people and trying to figure out what the, uh, what the exact uh, right answer is. So I, mean, well, I kind of have a feeling that maybe from this, we're going to um, trigger some questions, comments, and statements by our listeners when this finally airs. And yeah. uh, we may, we may be reviewing some things and uh, doing a bit of a, a change up on the podcast and, uh, <laughs> you know, waiting for their cards and letters and then turning it around and, um, and commenting or having a follow up on it or something. Uh, I think that would be excellent. Uh, you know, if, if anybody's got uh, thoughts, questions, or concerns, well, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a contact uh, uh, spot for, to contact us in the show notes. So uh, send an email, send your thoughts, and we'll, you know, gladly hash it out. You know, uh, we'll, 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 maybe we'll try and do it a first take, just read them cold and see uh, see what our, th our, uh, our initial thoughts are on that one. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I mean... I didn't figure this would be a, a long podcast, but, uh, you know, I guess it's 
But maybe we've generated more questions than answers well, for ourselves. I, I think, Kelly, where it gets into, too, is obviously we, we talked about the easel, but when you get into more advanced setups, sure, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, a common one you'll see is a sideways A-frame over a confined space. Yeah, yeah. And people insist on using the hobble strap, which <laughs> then bisects the hole. And you're like, sure. oh, yeah, you're, you know, and that's where you have to start <laughs> getting creative and explaining to the end user well, what way does a leg want to go? Sure. Yeah. How can we prevent that from happening yep. without bisecting our hole? Yeah, right? absolutely. You know, do sometimes it. it's really easy if the confined space has a collar on it. Other times it takes a little bit of work. Sure. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, yeah. I imagine so. And like you, I mean, you just do the best you can in the space you're given, I guess. And that you, yeah. you're right. Not, not every time can you, uh, you know, can you bolt it to the floor? So. And I think that's the most important part with these hobbles is the, for the end user to figure out, okay, where are where do these legs want to go? Yeah. And how yeah. do we stop that from happening with either independent hobbles or the other three ways that the manual lines out for the end user? Uh, two, uh, two points on the hobbles. Uh, the old vortexes that were sold used to come with a single uh, – strand of you know eight mil to, to hobble the legs mm -hmm. and then we switch to the three independent hobbles and i know it had something to do with i thought it was the force being generated on the change of direction of the cordelette does anybody know anything I, about I, that i don't think it was so much that is as if the fact that um as one leg moved it might put slack in and in in effect the others because they were all connected together in a big triangle okay Whereas the independent ones, if something happens to one hobble strap, it doesn't impact, you know, it, it, it obviously is going to impact that section of the triangle, but the other two are independent and sure. it's not going to impact them, as, if I remember the, the situation. Ah, f fair enough. That's a, uh, no, that makes good sense. Uh, f next question with that, and I get this often and I don't know why it's, it matters, but I guess it does. What do those cam buckles on the hobbles slide at? Any uh, is that something for the engineers to answer, or do we know that the? Does anybody know that number? They they know it, but I know I sure don't know it off the top of my head. And I remember going through that when those were put in. Yeah. Um, actually, before they were in the hobble straps, we were using them on the uh, lightweight litter harness, and we went in through it there as cool. well. And uh, because it's the same same buckle, but I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head. All right, the, the follow up to that, and it's something I've been meaning to measure and just haven't done. Uh, what is it, and like an average rearward skidding force of a back leg of an easel A frame? You know, could you put a, you know, like an enforcer load cell, you know, facing forward and just load it, you know, with that back leg anchored forward against a dynamometer and, and see what that is? Has, has anybody, I mean, does anybody know if anybody's done that kind of testing? I haven't heard of it, but boy, it would sure be subjective based on the surface friction and everything like that totally like i would want to you know go you could put it down on a piece of terrazzo floor and wax paper or something like that and you could get a really high number whereas if you were uh you know out in a wildland situation and you had a raptor foot that was into a crack or a hole or something like that you yeah. wouldn't have any force at all you know no you wouldn't i, I want to measure it worst case i'm going to put that foot on a skateboard and just like measure it there, like it's as bad as it'll ever get, and just yeah, see, right. See what it is, and contrast it with the uh, uh, with the uh, the cam buckle slip. Force. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a big number, but it'd be real yeah. interesting to see what you'd find out. Yeah, I don't think it is either. But you know, when you know, when people ask what the cam buckles are rated at, their their next logical question is, uh, you know, hey, how much you know force do they actually see? So it, it'd be interesting just to have it because I I've wanted it, I don't know it, but uh, that'd be an interesting one. Yeah, kind of a uh, oh, yeah, kind of an interesting sidestep to that. Uh, what do you guys think about uh, maybe not the hobble straps, but uh, uh, webbing as as side guys for uh, like sideways a frames? Anybody ever mess with that? Like just taking a ratchet strap and just you know it's it's a you know smaller footprint than an Aztec kit. Like I've I've messed with it. It, it works pretty darn well but yeah i mean they're, they're used to secure loads and yeah there's no reason obviously. why you couldn't do it at all you know? yeah I, yeah I, i've been trying to track down a, a, a ratchet strap standard i don't know if you got does anybody know of that does anybody like you know we got nfpa standards yeah. for making rope and stuff like is there the ratchet strap equivalent of nfpa 
So. I, I don't know because when you go to Home Depot and you can buy them, you know, anything from securing a car to securing a trash can on the back of your pickup truck, right? It's just, totally. There's so many different kinds. Yeah. I mean, the is. biggest issue is probably because we've always used rope because we have it. And sure. there's no reason why we couldn't use webbing except for the fact that most people aren't carrying webbing in lengths longer than about 20 feet. And by the time you tie some knots in it, that's really not a very much of a sideways anchor. No. You know, whereas to take a hundred or 150 or 200 or something, divide it in half and use it to anchor your sideways A is really easy. Um, now, if you're using a sideways A up against the leg, um, then it's probably, you know, one of those straps, if you can get one long enough, is probably not a big deal at all. And they're surely strong, but I'm sure that if there is anything, it'd probably be somewhere in like a material handling or something like that standard. Yeah. But I'm sure not aware of it. Nah, me, me neither. I had a friend checking in like the military, you know, with some load masters in the Air Force. Would have been good to have Leroy on here. He probably would have uh, had yeah. that answer for us. He was a load master, I think, in the Air Force. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Merrick, cool. Well, uh, again, uh, more questions than answers ab about this. I think we'll have to do some uh, back end follow up on, you know, clarifying the manuals because they, they are you know a little nebulous well you know we ought to we ought to talk about some of those things and uh maybe work on them for eiders for this next year you know now's the time to do some things and i'm not saying it's a full-scale testing program but it would be interesting to do a few of those tests for uh little fillers and things like that it's like here guys this is what we did and there's not a lot to make it you know you can't turn it into an hour presentation i don't think but um it sure would be interesting for people that do ask those questions to have the testing and to know the answers so yeah, absolutely. I, I bet I could turn it into an hour presentation if it saved me three hundred fifty dollars. You might. I wasn't going to say that, but you know, <laughs> you might, you might be bored. Be a, yeah, it wouldn't well. be a terribly difficult test, right? You secure one end to a fixed object, you get an enforcer and a grip hoist or a and any pulling device, and just see how tall when it slips, and yeah, then yeah. tie it off and see what happens. You know, you know, throw a half inch and see what happens. It, it would be interesting. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm up come for along that. A, come along in a load cell. You know, I'll, yeah. I'll look around if to see if there's any that are uh, marked with anything. That's the problem. Is I think on those things, you see these ones uh, with great big handles. You can put your whole hand in, and then some of them where you're just pulling them and latching them, kind of like on the hobble straps. And yeah, you know, some with little. I, I use them on my car to tie a litter down on the to the the roof rack. Sure, and uh, they don't. You know, it's a really thin single ply. It's nowhere near webbing that we normally use, but uh, sure works for that. And it'd be interesting to see, you know, if you had, I don't know, if, like it's back to, there's a standard kind of hold down, but, right. you know, like Wayne says, go to Home Depot or Lowe's or something and see what we can find. And, you yeah. know, I mean, yeah, people load their canoes and kayaks on top of their cars all the time with them. And, yeah. you know, there's not too many canoes and kayaks flying off the roofs usually. But uh, not yeah. intentionally. No, no, yeah. not, not, I, not I think too, if you're going to do that, though, you're going to probably want to. And, and a day they do test out fine. You're going to probably want to send them aside, keep them out of the UV. Yeah. Somebody's, you know, had stuff tied down to their uh, the rack for months. Oh yeah, and the thing is so UV degraded yet. Uh, as soon oh. as you put a little bit of load on it, it'll snap. Uh, that that that's for sure. No, I, I yeah. can definitely get down with that. Well, you see the fire guys that have uh, litters tied down to the brush truck or whatever on them, and then they say, "Oh, let's use this for our vortex guying." Um, yeah. You're going to run into that problem. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 I guess I, which is why I mentioned it. Although I got to say, as soon as you said the Eiders presentation, the first thing I thought of is Kelly's. The wheels are probably spinning here. There's got to be at least one or two additions to his machine shop yeah. to be able to make up the specific. <laughs> uh, Jigs uh, needed to do this test, so you know, sure, I think, surely I can get a surface grinder out of this one. I got my yeah, I mean, uh, big lathe. I'm sure I can get a surface grinder I'm, out of this I'm one. I'm thinking that you know, uh, yeah. In reality, it's a enforcer to an anchor and a come along on the other end. But <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm gonna do. But uh, yeah. like, it's, 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 I mean, somewhere in there, I need more stuff. But, exactly. Uh, Never uh, do a project uh, you don't need to buy a tool for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's uh, exactly right. Um, the, the only other uh, point, and I'll, I'll throw this one out there. That my we messed around with this at work the other day, and I, eh, it didn't work great. But I, we made our a sideways A frame with <laughs> basically with a big front. Uh, I don't even know what you call it. Footprint under the the front foot. We just took a big uh, piece of aluminum channel and ran it under the front foot, like you anchored to the aluminum channel itself. Like you could drill the channel in. It, it had to do with making sideways A frames on buildings. 
with you know junky anchors, but we you could you know affix this mm. aluminum uh, rectangular channel to the building with tap cons, and then you put your front foot of a sideways A on it, and your side guys go to the outside like outriggers basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand. They, they, yeah. they go to the side of that. Man, like uh, if you there's a fair amount of flex, but um, once you get over the flex of that outrigger, it, it actually worked pretty good. Like it was its own, uh, you know, it was its own, you know, awesome side guy frame. I don't, I don't know if anybody's messed with that, but we were uh, definitely geeked out on it for a while, and then just you know, kind of flit it off into other territory. But well, if you were worried about any sort of flexure or something, obviously you could design something other than a standard channel, or just get a deeper channel or something like that. I mean, that's. That's just a matter. The biggest thing is, is it probably has to be long enough to get your good angle on your side yeah. guys. That would be the only issue, mm-hmm. I think. It was. We we ended up just uh, running a pretty short sideways a frame to make favorable side guy angles for ourselves. But um, yeah, it worked pretty neat. I'll, I mean, um, maybe we could post pictures in the show notes. I don't know. I'll, I'll show you. It was a. Uh, it was just a neat way of bringing a sideways a frame where, wherever the heck you wanted it. So, because um, I, I I like sideways a frames, my brain. Uh, has an affinity towards them more than any no, other. Oh, they're very forgiving. Thing. Very yeah, forgiving. Definitely. And it, like they're, you know, they're smashed down into the ground. Like they, they have difficulty going anywhere, which is good. Right. So, um, what I'm cool. curious is, oh, what is the name going to be? The Appalachian what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of things I've been struggling on. I want to shoehorn that Appalachian name in there. And I just, I've, yeah. been, I've been struggling to do it with a couple of them. Usually I got to, you know, some smart ass name like right off the break, and the <laughs> the, the, the Appalachian couple. Sidewinder or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There you exactly. go. This, uh, yeah, I'm up. Appalachian. No, I had Appalachian yeah. Kickstand at one point. The danger with the giving them silly names is if one of them sticks, like you, like it's it's just, it's just terrible because everybody calls it that, and then you were just you were just goofing around. You were, you know, three drinks in when you came up with the name, like hey, we got to call it the whatever. And, that's what people is, call is there it. is there some nickname you could use that's got fewer symb- syllables than Appalachian? No, I mean that's just an A. I mean the you know I've got my uh, Appalachian Simple System. I'm trying oh, to get out there. So, but the you know there's <laughs> the, I just got to make the mnemonic uh, you know clever. Yeah. But the, no, that's uh, I don't have one for that yet. We'll I, we'll have to think of that one. We'll come we'll come back with it next show. <laughs> so. Uh, it's it's a good idea though when you think about it mm-hmm. you know you it, depending on the length and there's no reason why you couldn't you know there's ways you could splice it together and do things like that but um, yeah. it's pretty it's pretty uh, much limited to the urban situation yes. where uh, you have that you know flat area where you don't want to place an anchor or you don't have any anchors yep. because it's kind of almost self guying in some ways it is yeah um, but then again. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, you, you could make pieces and parts to do it, but sure. you know, a, a triskelion yeah. leg, the new tripod leg. If if you have a trashed one of those, uh, you know, expanding box beam would be an would be an excellent uh, outrigger anchor. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, we we had looked at uh, some sort of expanding beam. Again, we you know we messed with it with wood and uh, some channel for a little while, and then we're like, oh, you know, like shiny object over here, and just you know got on with the next. Uh, Project. I've got, I've got some three inch aluminum channel in my garage, you know, and I'm oh. not sure if that's long, uh, you know, it's long enough, but, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, let's try it out. Like put a couple of eye bolts on the outside and. Yeah, uh, I could see, do that. Yeah, it's it was it was a neat experiment. I It was, uh, it, it worked better than I thought. And especially if you anchor the back leg also to those, you know, same front eye bolts, like, uh, you know, two hobble straps from the back leg up to the side outrigger eye bolts or whatever you have sticking out that. It stabilized it like really, really bomber. It was it was pretty fun to mess with. Well, now so. you're circling around your initial statement because the <laughs> the thing that the, the, the outside le- well in that case it's not really it's set up as an A frame. Yeah. So the front anchor is anchored into. Well, I guess it's anchored independently if you put it in the channel, but the back anchor is back to the hobbles, and it's back to the way we've always done it in some ways, <laughs> where not- it's it's not. It's not attached to the structure or the natural condition well, at all because well, it's self-supporting that, on its own. Well, that one I did, like I did, uh, you know, screw the, uh, the the outrigger, you know, just so it wouldn't slide back. And again, just little tap cons, but just just to mess with it, just to see. But we didn't put a tremendous load on it, so mm. um, man, it, you know, I- I- interesting thought. I think so. If it's it's uh, it would be a neat one to see out there. I don't know, maybe. It, Maybe that is a 
another writer's, uh, you know, hasty topic or something, you know, 15 minutes or something. Maybe I'll, I'll work on it when I get back to work, I suppose. Like I'm, I'm and always I guess looking for something to do. One, one question, would, it, would there be a advantage to having an integral uh, foot basically, you know, welded into that? It'd look cool on Instagram. Yeah. So I, I don't know if that's... A, you that's know what no I mean? Bad. Instead of placing no, the do. foot in the channel, yeah, yeah, they yeah. actually have a piece of tubing come up with the pinholes in. Yeah, it'd be even no, more stable. Totally, yeah, absolutely. Because then it couldn't slip. Yeah. yeah, but you'd lose some adjustability if you had to. If you, you know, if you put your socket in the center, you know, you got to figure out a way to move it around. You're designing product now, but yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, <laughs> well, that's what I was thinking about the channel. I have is not wide enough for the for a, a vortex foot to fit right in it right now. The Raptor would be fine, but the regular vortex foot wouldn't fit in it. It's not wide enough. Yeah, even if you turned it sideways. Well, or would that bind? I yeah, I, yeah. Front legs dang near vertical anyway, so nah, it's it's a neat project. Like I I had fun doing it. So I mean, if you if you do something with it, John, that'd be uh, I'd be interested in seeing it. So hmm. uh, you could pin it too uh, if you're going to use channel. Do a flat foot, make it the 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 same width, and pin it just like a whaler. Yeah, sure. for trench rescue, that yeah, would work. Uh, absolutely. Then you'd have would. the then you'd have the the ball joint in there. I might have to uh, borrow a whaler from uh, one of the other guys at work. So, <laughs> just you know, for for trench stuff, for trench stuff. So, uh, cool. All right. Well, so what what does independent anchoring of the feet actually mean when using an Arizona vortex? Uh, it means hobble straps, apparently. So, well, uh, I th- I think it can mean a bunch of stuff, and it it's uh, uh, it I, I don't know that we got to the bottom of it yet, but you know, if if listeners have questions and uh, want to submit them to us we would you know gladly take them and try and answer them we'll try and do some work on the back end and uh, if we end up doing iter's presentations we'll uh, we'll make everybody privy to that as well so we'll you know what does back leg skid at what do cam buckles slide at uh and do outside outriggers actually work on a sideways a-frame so uh, anybody have any uh last thoughts they want to add doug actually i do have a quick question here for you yeah one of the one of the configurations we do sometimes is basically where that third leg heads over and basically t-bones into a beam or a column or something and we lash that to it sure yeah yeah so but the million dollar question is how now do we what is the proper way to independently hobble those other the, the two feet on the A frame on the other side because obviously it's easy to connect them together. You're talking like an easel A frame in a confined space with just a really short back leg. Well, just, but like, what's smashed the, into the vertical. back legs ninety degrees to the yep. vortex. Ninety yeah. degrees to the vortex, exactly. So oh, it doesn't matter if it's ninety degrees or at an angle if you're tying it to a column or some other structure. It's independently yeah, I mean, anchored. I, however, I have, you did it. I have done those. Yeah, and obviously mm-hmm. you secure the leg. The one I did in particular was you secure the leg, uh, the, the 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 rear leg, if you will, the horizontal leg, mm-hmm. by lashing it to the column what we did, and then the uh, uh, what would be the front legs were just hobbled together because that particular space allowed us to do that. Now you may say I'll hobble them independently, but I think it goes back to right resist all movement. However, you have to do that. Sure. Look at the look at the. Uh, tendency of the motion and resist that tendency with with back ties hobbles whatever you got to do and that's why i brought that specific example up because should we be taking and hobbling the that front a-frame back to the same column but at the base if it's a column and you can get away with it i would, sure. I would yeah. go that'd for be it, the easy that'd be the yeah. easy answer for that so some of sometimes it's like a beam though like a low-hanging mm-hmm. beam horizontal and like you're just you're not going to get those front legs to to Right, you know, hop, you know, you might hobble them together, but they're not. There's nothing they can do. You know, you can't go back so, with them. Yeah, anywhere. and I think it depends on what the you know. Exactly. If you can look at the movement and say, "Hey, this could happen," mm-hmm. then fine. Try to resist that movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. All right. I mean, I guess it, uh, the, the one of the opening lines in the manual is, you know, you got to know what you're doing and know what forces you're applying. I guess, which is mm-hmm. you know another catch-all, but I mean, it really is critical with something like a you know an artificial high directional. So. I think that's, uh, I mean, the ultimate answer is just, you know, know what you're doing and d- don't do anything dumb. <laughs> but, I mean, that's pretty, uh, that's painting with a pretty broad brush, but I, I, I don't know if there's a better way to say it. So, uh, Wayne, you got any uh, last-minute stuff uh, you want to add on this one? 
No, like I said, uh, my my big thing is look at uh, what's going on, where those legs want to go, and resist that movement. Yep, I I agree with that, John. You, it's it's a great tool, but you got to know what you're doing with it because you can do it wrong, as we've all said. Know what you're doing, practice with it in advance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, when it's time to use it on an incident is uh is not the time to be figuring out physics. So, uh, cool. Well, I mean, it was a. Uh, Boy, we went a little longer than I uh, had expected on this one. Generated some more questions and some more work for ourselves, I think, on the back end. But uh, you know, hopefully, we answered some questions and at least uh, you know provided some insight for you, our listeners. But for uh, Doug, Wayne, and John, uh, thank you for listening, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks.